That's for me to know and for you to dot, dot, dot. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Damon Salvatore moments. What's so special about this Bella girl? Edward's so wit. I mean, you hate me. The earth is back on the taxes. I always had a thing for sorority girls. You're disgusting. I know. For this list, we'll be looking at the wittiest and most memorable Damon Salvatore quotes and scenes from The Vampire Diaries. We're also issuing a spoiler warning. What's your favorite Damon one-liner? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, first impressions. Hey. Damon. When meeting someone new for the first time, most of us strive to make a good first impression, though it's pretty clear that Damon Salvatore isn't your average guy. He doesn't like me very much. So when he's introduced to werewolf Mason Lockwood, he opts for some self-deprecating humor in response to Mason's attempt at being friendly. He basically tells him his intel is faulty. We haven't met. Mason Lockwood. Oh, sure. Hey, Damon Salvatore. I know. Heard great things about you. Really? That's weird. I'm a dick. The relationship between these two sours pretty fast, so that by the end, Mason probably agrees with Damon's self-assessment. It turns out he was being comical and honest, which is the perfect combination if you ask us. <laughs> now I get it. You're just stupid. Catherine doesn't love you. She's using you, you moron. Number nine, Miss Cuddles. You know, check the GPS again. Just because we don't see anything doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Not unlike Caroline's feelings for Stefan. Everyone can agree that a good stuffed animal can provide comfort and joy in dark times, no matter your age. A trapped Bonnie stores her magic inside her teddy bear, Miss Cuddles, and sends it to the mortal realm. When Damon finds it, he's not above having some fun. Oh no, is Stefan feeling sensitive about ruining his friendship with Caroline? She really liked him and he broke her heart. See Stefan, even the bear knew. So when Stefan messes things up with Caroline, his big brother uses Miss Cuddles to poke some fun at him. He mimics the bear's voice, saying even she could see what happened between them coming. I saw that from a mile away, and my brain's made of cotton. Yes. It's definitely a nice moment of comic relief amidst the drama, wrapped in an adorable bear package. We only have one question. Where can we get one? Miss Cuddles 1, Invisible Creepy Mansion, zero. Number 8, Learning to Spell Doppelganger. It's no secret that the Vampire Diaries love to play with different supernatural phenomena. First drop the Stefan look. <laughs> what? One example of this was the continuous use of doppelgangers throughout the years. Even the most loyal fans might have lost track of how many there were. So when Silas tells Damon that Stefan is actually his doppelganger, he says he might have to learn to spell the word if he keeps hearing it. If I have to hear the word doppelganger one more time, I think I'm gonna actually have to learn how to spell it. What makes this extra humorous is the fact that the writers are poking fun at themselves. In reality, Damon is just saying what the viewers are thinking. It's funny because it's true. A, get out of my head. B, I think I'd know if my little brother had an evil twin. Number seven, Taylor Swift fan. The eldest Salvatore brother is a catch and he knows it. I've decided to stay a while. And I'm just having way too much fun here with you and Elena. So when Stefan tells him that Elena wears a vervain necklace that protects her from being compelled, he's a little offended. Damon quips that he doesn't need to get inside her head that way. Some girls just can't resist my good looks, my style, and my charm, and my unflinching ability to listen to Taylor Swift. According to him, some girls simply can't resist him. He's attractive, charming, and can get down with some Taylor Swift. Honestly, we can't say we disagree with him. He may be a villain at this point, but these witty remarks definitely make him an endearing one. This is John Varvatos, dude. Dick move. We wonder if Damon is more of a folklore or fearless era Swifty. Number six, explosion denial. What do you do if people are accusing you of a crime you didn't commit? Well, don't look at me. I always take credit for killing people. Seriously, stop looking at me like that, Liz. If I was gonna kill 12 people, I wouldn't blow them up. I'd have a dinner party. Well, if you're Damon, you make sure to add a little bit of sarcasm and attitude to your denial. After an explosion kills members of the Founders Council, nobody knows who's responsible except the viewers. Friends, we are the beginning. 
council, with Pastor Young at its helm, wanted to destroy vampires. The pastor even kidnapped Stefan and Elena, so it's not too far-fetched to wonder if Damon was behind it, and pretty much everyone does. The explosion was sparked from inside. This wasn't an accident. You say that like it's a bad thing. The council's dead, Liz. I see that as a win. Therefore, when Elena asks him if he's responsible, he's tired of the question and snaps back with this hilarious response. Did you set off the explosion that killed the town council? Am I wearing my I blew up the council t-shirt? Why does everybody keep asking me that? It's nice that no matter what, he always remains quick-witted. Number five, how I met your mother. To feel or not to feel, that is the question vampires must grapple with. In fact, Damon explains that they have a humanity switch. I looked for the woman I married, but she wasn't there. Whoever that is, is cold and detached. Yeah, she's given up her humanity. If they turn it off, they stop feeling. As a result, they become ruthless and cold. He makes the argument that it's a vampire's instinct not to feel. He presents Stefan as the exception, saying he wants the human experience with all the suffering it brings. You can turn it off, it's like a button you can press. I mean, Stefan's different. He he wants the whole human experience. He wants to feel every episode of How I Met Your Mother, so he shuts his feelings out. The problem is, as a vampire, your instinct is not to feel. Funnily enough, his example is his brother wanting to truly experience How I Met Your Mother. He says it with such disdain that it's amusing, especially since the show is supposed to be a comedy. There are probably a few people who agree with Damon on this one. I mean, come on. You could turn it off, wouldn't you? You haven't. <laughs> of course I have, Rick. That's why I'm so fun to be around. Number four, Twilight Reference. This book, by the way, has it all wrong. One of the things that sets this show apart is its ability to seamlessly reference pop culture in clever ways. A prime example of this is when Damon reads Twilight. What's so special about this Bella girl? Edward's so wit. He's not impressed by Edward's love for Bella. Plus, his criticisms don't end there. When Caroline asks him why he doesn't sparkle in the sun, he tells her that's not how it works in the real world. The sun actually scorches their skin. How come you don't sparkle? Because I live in the real world where vampires burn in the sun. Yeah, but you go in the sun. I have a ring. Text me. Long story. Basically, Twilight got it all wrong. He even says he misses Anne Rice, author of The Vampire Chronicles. She knew how to write vampires. Ah, oh, Miss Anne Rice. She was so on it. It's particularly funny when you consider the fact that the Twilight franchise made vampires mainstream. In other words, Twilight walked so that the Vampire Diaries could run. This is what I am. Number three, Dear Diary. Okay, now you're just being mean. I mean, you hate me. The Earth is back on its axis. Damon and Stefan are vastly different from one another, with Damon being free-spirited and Stefan being more serious. At this point, Stefan is struggling, recovering from a ripper rampage. He did a lot of things he regrets while his humanity was off, even almost hurting Elena. And when Damon walks in on him brooding while writing in his diary, he can't help but crack a joke. Dear diary, a chipmunk asked me my name today. I told him it was Joe. That lie will haunt me forever. What do you want? He begins narrating a fake journal entry about how bad he feels for lying to a chipmunk about his name. He's poking fun at how Stefan has a hard time forgiving himself for his mistakes. I was hoping we could hang. You know, a little brother bonding. I mean, I know we don't actually hang out, we team up, we join forces, we activate our wonder twin powers. Dear Diary, we definitely think these two balance each other out perfectly. Number two, awkward interruption. So first things first, since you are Elena Gilbert, you're on journal duty. Since when am I helping? Well, Stefan's helping and you've taken up residency in Stefan's bed, ergo. Every family has its problems. For the Salvatore brothers, sometimes it's boundaries. When Damon barges in and interrupts a tender moment between Stefan and Elena in bed, they're understandably uncomfortable, especially given the fact that they don't trust Damon at this point. They tell him to get out, but when has Damon ever done what he's told? Instead, he stays at the edge of the bed and delivers this witty line. Seriously, get out of here. If I see something I haven't seen before, I'll throw a dollar at it. It has the potential to be a really tense and awkward situation, yet he diffuses it with this lighthearted jab. And to be fair, he's been alive for so long, we doubt there's much he hasn't seen. It's all part of his charm. We have some very important business to discuss. And it has to be right now? Well, we have lots to do, now that we're all friends and working toward a common goal. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Forest Animal Fears. Damon can never help poking fun at his brother. Care for one? No, thank you. Not hungry. Just ate. Aren't you worried that one day all the forest animals are going to band together and fight back? I mean, 
Surely they talk. Vampire procreation. Vampires may not be able to procreate, but they sure like to try. Let's just say that I'm descended from Catherine. Does that make me part vampire? Vampires can't procreate, but we love to try. Wikipedia. Damon mocks a college professor. Witches have appeared across every culture in history. They're the architects of the supernatural, responsible for everything that goes bump in the night, from ghosts to vampires to doppelgangers. What is this guy, Wikipedia? <laughs> Shut up. Eternal stud. Being immortal has its perks. It's cool not growing old. I like being the eternal stud. Amazing race. Damon tries to convince Stefan they're a team. Where are we going? We are not going anywhere. I'm gonna live my life as far away from you as possible. But we're a team. We could travel the world together. We could try out for the amazing race. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, killing the messenger. Leave it to Demon Salvatore to infuse a little humor into everything he does, even his threats. We're on the same side. Oh, yeah? What side is that? Catherine's. When it's revealed that Elena's birth mother, Isabel, is up to no good, Damon is furious. It turns out she's trying to get a vampire killing gadget for none other than Catherine Pierce, her daughter's evil lookalike. Basically, she's the middleman. Why are you doing her dirty work? Don't kill the messenger. We both know that you can't control Catherine. However, Damon doesn't buy into the old don't shoot the messenger adage, which he makes crystal clear with this line. You do not come into my town threaten people I care about. Going after Elena? Bad move. You leave her alone or I will rip you to bits because I do believe in killing the messenger. You know why? Because it sends a message. In the middle of strangling Isabel and telling her not to mess with Elena, he makes sure to emphasize how he would have no problem hurting her to send Catherine a message. Well, we certainly hear him loud and clear. Catherine wants something for me? You tell the little bitch to come get it herself. Do you agree with our picks? Check out the